Hey everybody, we're back with another episode. Dustin and I are iced in at our respective homes, so we tried to do this remotely. Uh, we recorded another episode where we talked a little bit about the big Louisville win, uh, and talk about our upcoming games, how we think we're going to finish, and our, maybe our predictions for the NCAA, if, if we can hang on, and how we feel about the last uh, five games. We also have a surprise giveaway, kind of impromptu, so I hope you listen all the way to the end. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode two of the Red and White Podcast with D&E. Uh, this is a podcast that's now about a basketball team that has hopes for the NCAA tournament. What you think, Evan? How about that resurgence? Just after selling the farm after the blowing the Virginia game. I mean, I don't know about you, but... I was trying to start a fire in the parking lot after that. Uh, <laughs> I, I really tried to tone it down, but I was pretty pissed off. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was a frustrating one. I think uh, it was a pretty raw recording we did of uh, after that one. Yeah, but, you know, I think I may have been madder after the Louisville game. <laughs> you know, we won, but it pissed me off. Like, how are we that inconsistent? That's the frustrating part that we've seen – with you know under Godfrey and I I know it's Godfrey's players now that it's now they're younger and didn't have them before and all that stuff but man they've been so close to beating everybody or almost everybody I mean Virginia twice and the Carolina game and the Notre Dame game and, you know the only game they really got blown out was Clemson and that was just you know whatever but <laughs> Clemson <laughs> that's the frustrating part you know after you play a game like Louisville where they just you know they're playing so well and then you like you look back, you know, just a few days beforehand, like, how did you not do it against Virginia? The opportunity was there. Yeah, I don't know if the the difference for the past couple of games. If, if you look, I think it's the past five games. Cat Barber has just been money. Uh, I, Louisville, I, I looked it up earlier: twenty-one points, four assists, two turnovers. But then you go that's, back and look at the Virginia game, and he scored eleven. That's. You know, that's what I've always expected, Cat, when they recruited him. I mean, he's played the last few games. You know, Virginia may be the exception. But he's played the last few games just being aggressive. He's shooting a little more. He's going to the basket, which is his best His best asset, is playing fast, playing towards the rim. Uh, you know, with, with him playing like that, it takes a little bit of pressure off Lacey and uh, Turner. It's a it's a completely different team. It's, a really, it's really good to see. I mean... I, if he keeps that up, they're going to be a hard team to knock out. Knock out if they make it. Well, they're going to be a hard team to knock out the AC tournament. I think well, anybody can win too. the AC tournament at this point. But does does that state team show up or does Clemson team show up? You know. Yeah. Again, that's the frustrating part. We have they have it. They have the pieces. You know, if Cat's playing like that, they definitely have the pieces to do it. Yeah. What is uh, nationally? What, what does a win like that look like? For for somebody looking at this, the results, they all oh, well they took down Duke, took down Louisville, but they got curb stomped by Clemson. I don't know if anybody ever, if they're going to look at the Clemson game. I think our strength of schedule. Uh, I saw somebody tweeted earlier was two, which is pretty good. I mean, and I think two. The I didn't realize the, it was that high. Yeah, it's two, which is impressive. You know, Gottfried. The one thing Gottfried does have down is scheduling. He knows how to schedule his way into a tournament. We've seen that in the last few years. Uh, plays good enough competition to get them in there. But with that strength of schedule, and I think the RPI is 43 right now, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident. I think Joel Lenardi's got us in the last four in yeah, um, at the moment. For now. Yeah. Um, but there's a not necessarily easy schedule coming. I mean, we've got, what, uh, five games left? And three are away. Yeah, so I look at it, and you know, Virginia Tech tomorrow. Uh, I feel pretty good about the game. We'll talk about that one. Uh, Carolina, nobody ever, no state fan should ever feel good about playing Carolina team. Oh, we're getting them, man. Um, I know you do for some reason. I've uh, I've thought we were going to win there all year, even after we lost at home. I don't know what it is. Anyway, too uh, many so bears. Virginia Tech, Carolina, and then at Boston College. You know that should be a, a win for this team. I know at anywhere on the road in the ACC is not a guaranteed win, but I feel pretty good about that one. 
uh, you know, for some reason, Clemson's a hard place to play for a lot of ACC teams. Uh, I think we'll go down there. We'll be our. We might be all right. Uh, and then Syracuse at home. So, I mean, if you go four and one out of the stretch, that's fantastic. Um, three and two still still gonna be pretty good. Three or two, three and two gets to five hundred. Is that right? I believe so. I'm not the sure game what the conference now? record is. Yeah. Uh, that was 18 and 13. Mm, that's tough. I mean, uh, we're sitting here talking about the tournament, and we're in 11th place in the ACC right now. I know, but that just doesn't feel right. <laughs> no, it, it seems like it should be better. I mean, you look, and there's Florida State's above us. Yeah. Clemson's above us. But who have they played? That That's the difference, I think, that they have to look at when it comes time to pick a team. I suspect it'll level out there a little bit. I would hope so. Uh like you say, VT should be a win. We need to take advantage of it now before they get better, which they will in the years to come. Uh, yeah, I mean, Buzz, he's a good coach. Oh, yeah, he'll uh, get them there. Uh, same get, thing. Get they're on the, the Wake Forest thing, I think. Like, they're on, they're they're going to get better. There's no doubt. Yeah. Uh, VT, that, sh- you know, should be a win. At Carolina, I'm – well – See, you you brought me back down to earth, making fun of me, but I, I just feel good about it. I don't know why. <laughs> Plus, the the one thing I think that we may really get up for that game, and the reason is, you know, Carolina's lost out of four, so that should bolt them up in the rankings to top ten at least. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I cannot. There's, and I saw. Uh, I think it was. I can't remember. If it was ESPN or CBS or somebody that there. You know, they revamped the the rankings or their power rankings after every day. And they still had UNC at 18. Yeah. I'm like, you've lost four or five. Come on. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So I'm looking at the ACC standings here. And after Duke, who's 10 and 3 in the league, Louisville's 8 and 5, Carolina's 8 and 5, Syracuse is 8 and 5, and then 7 and 6, 7 and 7, 7 and 7, and then Pittsburgh and NC State are tied at 6 and 7. So you can go from anywhere from 11th to essentially fourth place in the league at this point. I think Louisville's probably got fourth wrapped up, but I mean, I I, su- I su- see that they should jump up quite a bit there. If, if they go four and one, that puts us, I'd say six. Do you really expect to go four and one? I don't expect. <laughs> I would never expect to go four and one. <laughs> Three and two, I would think, has to be. That's um, seven or eight. That I mean, that's that's putting us pretty close there. I see. I just. Being under 500, I'm not sure. I think we uh, we should be playing on Sunday if we're under 500 at the end of the season and hoping for you know a shot. In my opinion, three and two puts us at nine and nine, so that's not under five. Three and two. Well, I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay, so say we NC State it. So I'm looking. Say we get VT. Uh, say we lose in Chapel Hill, lose yeah. in Clemson, and then lose to Q's at home. They're playing better. See, that's the interesting thing about Cuse is that this is going to be their last game of the year. I mean, they're not going to any of the tournaments. You know, exactly. They're done. So they could either pack it in or they could play inspired. I'm not sure which team's going to show up. or You know, you don't see this very often, so I don't know what's going to happen. It was funny, I though. The Syracuse Duke game, good. I was just cr- crossing my fingers that they won every game they had except for us. Yeah. So they would be easily in to, you know, take away that self-imposed sanction that they just weren't going to make it anyway. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. The two and three, I could easily see happen. I could easily see four and one on the other end. So I think it just depends on how they, who they want to be. You know, and I, I think three and two is a safe bet, and that puts us at nine and nine. And with that strength of schedule, I I, I feel pretty good about that. And that's probably the kiss of death. But yeah, it could be. <laughs> I don't know. What what if they go, say they get to that 500 mark, and then they lose the first game in the tournament? I think they'll be okay. You do? I think strength of schedule at two and RPI in the 40s it puts us in. See, the only thing that makes me think otherwise is, like last year, I didn't think we had a chance. And then we'd squeak in. So if I go into Selection Sunday comfortable, there's no way we're getting in, man. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's the NC State in us, so. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, all right, so going through, not how many do we have to win. Let's do VT, win or lose. W. 
W. I agree. At Carolina. Mm, loss. Loss? Yeah. Oh, you have little faith. That's going to be a win. Uh, we can win that game because Carolina is just, I mean, I mean a game against Duke, but they're overall they're just not playing that well. I mean, Marcus Page got dominated by Quinn Cook, and that's not good for him. If he's yeah, play, my, if it, PNC it Page heart, shows too. up, then I think that's a different story. But yeah, okay. So you're at one and one. I'm at two and zero oh. mm-hmm. at BC. Win. See, I think that's a win too. So you're at well, what's your record now? Three, you're two and one, and I'm three and zero oh. mm-hmm. at Clemson. I think we win that game. Do you? Mm-hmm. I think we lose. I think we get revenge for that egg we laid here. I hope so, but I just, I don't know. I think especially if they run through and say they go two and one through those first three, I would say we're due a loss because we've not really shown anything otherwise the, the whole season that we would be able to win. Right. You know, uh, Syracuse home. I think we get Syracuse at home. See, it feels weird that I feel like we can go to Chapel Hill and win, but we're going to lose at home to Syracuse. Yeah. Just because of – I think they, they're they playing better. Like you said, there's that whole uh, – their last game of the season no matter what, and that's something that I hadn't even put together, which thanks for that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I just I, don't think they're that good. I mean, as long as we don't leave Cooney open for – you know, a dozen threes. I think we match up pretty well against Raheem Christmas. I don't know if anybody else. I don't know. I I'd see them packing it in at that point. So you expect us to defend the three? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, I don't know. I don't feel confident about it, but I'm going with the win, just because I know there's a lot of Syracuse fans that are going to be there. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are near Cary. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> since we don't have an official sponsor yet we're going to use this break to talk about us um, don't forget you can give us a call, 919-766-0096. Leave us a voicemail. We'll play it on a, on the podcast. Let us know how you feel. You can talk about whatever you want, football, basketball, baseball, the women's basketball team, nailing a three-pointer at the last second to beat Miami after being down 20 points. Pretty cool. Uh, anything you want. You can also hit us up on Twitter, at Red and White Podcast, or... You can find me at, at ER and Dustin at, at State Sports Beat. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the second half. All right, so basketball. Should should finish well, we're confident. So let's make a touch on football. Dave Doran, what do you got? Dave Doran signed. You heard it here first, folks. Well, actually, you heard it That's on right. Twitter. Dave Doran signed a contract extension for two more years. Absolutely fantastic move. You have, I think you have to do it. I mean, your Debbie Al, I think it shows confidence in the direction of the program. And I don't, there's no reason not to. It was a great. Is a great move. Some really interesting uh, contracts, or I mean, bonuses in his contract. Eight wins gets him fifty grand. What's this? What else we got here? I mean, eight wins is that's, that's guaranteed. Now we're an eight-win program already, so <laughs> it's just holding steady. Yeah, so we've some, got a somebody tough brought schedule the, and all, but you know. <laughs> yeah, see, somebody brought the point. You know, if, do does putting that um, clause in the contract does that? kind of steer you towards scheduling jumps but for the most part the schedule set for I think the next like eight years or whatever it is so I don't know if that really comes into play well we have to schedule the other power five now yeah there's no around you know getting around it yeah and they're not going to be easy games we're not going to Tuscaloosa or anything but yeah Mississippi State was up on the on the upswing this year we'll be going there uh 
West Virginia to go burn couches and stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so here it is. I'm still off uh, Joe Giglio's Twitter feed. Eight wins worth 50K um, plus another 100K for a supplemental package. Nine gets him 100,000 plus another 200 for a supplemental package. So when we say supplemental, it's, um, you know, radio, TV, all that stuff. That's kind of how they build in some extras into the contract. What else does he have? 500K if he wins the national title. Man, he's going to be a rich man in a couple of years. <laughs> uh, 100,000 100, for finishing in top 15. Uh, 250,000 for winning 12 plus games. Uh, eight wins triggers an automatic one year extension. Uh, under. Yeah, so that's dang, that's pretty good. I mean, that kind of helps. Is that just for one year? Yeah, automatic one year extension. So. So it's this is basically a three year extension. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. If 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 we don't win eight games next season, I'd be about ready to boot him out myself. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding, but uh, I think eight wins is definitely a, a realistic goal next season. Right. Uh, well, it also brings out his brings up his buyout, which is good to know to uh, base salary eight hundred and forty times years remaining, which would be four point two million. So, you know, when the SEC comes calling for Dave Dorn. They can pony up four point two million for us. Well, that wouldn't be bad. I'd still rather keep him probably and just go to the SEC ourselves. But <laughs> oh, um, well, let's not go there yet because I agree with you. <laughs> that would be bad. That's a whole different episode. That is but, a whole different episode. Uh, but yeah, I think it's something they definitely had to do. I I think it was awesome of her to do it. After you know, some people may fuss and well, he's been here. He had one bad year, one good year. I think it's nice, and it really gives her or shows her confidence in where the program's going to give him that extension after the one good year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You could absolutely see the growth after the one season, Um, and I think that's definitely – it speaks for her confidence in the program, her confidence in the entire coaching staff, really, because it wasn't just him that got a good deal, uh, if if I'm understanding right. They – got some raises didn't they the assistants yeah so i think all the assistants got raises i don't know if those numbers have been put out yet or yet but so doran gets the extension but all the raise all the assistants get raises as well we saw you know earlier in the early year matt canada's extension got or matt canada got an extension after we kept him from leaving for tennessee and, uh, they were pretty pissed about that from what i read oh uh, it's funny too i saw and i actually believe i don't think it's necessarily just a money thing but he said that basically he wanted to keep his family in Raleigh as opposed to Knoxville. Yeah. Uh, education, general, you know, living itself, which is speaks a, a good deal to the city itself, which obviously it, it's helped. It may or may not. He may have been bullshitting, but it helped keep a coach, and that same everything that he said can be used for recruiting as well. So – enjoy the city you live in it may help you have a better football team in the end yeah you know i think that's part of it as well you know if you're matt Canada and he's like well i got jacoby this year i got Jalen behind him plus you know all the stud running backs we've recruited and guys we have that's pretty attractive i know tennessee recruits pretty well but you know if you have that kind of talent playing in the acc i think it kind of gives you a little bit of a leg up you know makes you look a little better um so the the potential is there. I think that's all part of the, the attractiveness. And plus, you know, Raleigh's pretty awesome. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I lived in South Carolina for three years, so this place is just amazing. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, you, if, if any of you live in South Carolina, then then I'm I'm sorry. I'm not trying to insult you, but that, that I lived there three years, and Florence, South Carolina, is the armpit of America. Um, and it's funny. You can just come a few few hours up 95 and it's a, it's an entirely different everything um and i i can speak too for my family is all originally from east tennessee they're all diehard tennessee fans all live around knoxville and knoxville's a cool, a cool city going on you know the matt canada deal but he he's right to think that raleigh's better overall um and i think that just yeah, the city itself is a good thing for recruiting. And I also think that the quick extension here, Adorn, uh, that getting out to recruits, they know they're safe. They're not going to come somewhere and the coach be gone a year. 
I think that's a recruiting boost, especially, I don't want to say I'm not going to promote negative recruiting, but Doran's safe. If you look, you know, go down 40 to Chapel Hill, that coach might not be the safest man in, in college football. I don't think so. You know, I think we we saw at the end of last year, people are always, you know, they're disappointed. It was their year to win the Coastal, and, you know, they're – I think the speculation is that he is on the hot seat. Um, I, I think he's probably looking for any way to get out of that dumpster fire as soon as possible. But he just hadn't had that year where it's gonna he's going to be the most attractive person yet. I mean, winning seven games in Chapel Hill isn't getting you that job at Florida or huh. you know, wherever. No, but I, I want to come to his defense. I mean – if everyone could revive a sleeping giant, then he would have never, somebody before him would have done it. That's so, right. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Speaking of Carolina, uh, this is the last thing I got. I don't know what you have, but I saw uh, the schedule release. I think it was yesterday that came out that Carolina has booked themselves in 2016 the Chick fil A kickoff against the University of Georgia. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of that game. Uh, I'm a little jealous of the exposure that they're going to get from that game. See, I look at it next year, I think it is. They start against, uh, what, South Carolina and Charlotte, right? Yeah. And then, bam, next year, Georgia and Atlanta. We had that one one good year of getting just destroyed by a Derek Dooley-led Tennessee oh. and Atlanta. But other than that, scheduling, I get that it's building the program, but it hurts to look right down the road and see what they're getting and we're not. Yeah, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, at least Georgia's going to curb stomp them. I can oh, remember. it's going to be I'll predict disaster. that in two seasons ahead. Yeah, they're going to destroy I, them. I think I may go just to laugh and watch. <laughs> I hate Georgia, too. I grew up a Tennessee fan and then, you know, went to state. I pulled for both, but I might have gone to Tennessee if not for out-of-state tuition, but that led me to hate Georgia anyway. Oh, and I'll still pull for them. I, oh, I, I'll go wear Georgia red. Well, I, we can wear state red. Yeah, we'll just right. fit in, but... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I would if they want to keep booking games like that. I think South Carolina kills them next season, and that's a bad South Carolina team. But Georgia is—they have an off year, and they're still better than Carolina. I, I can't tell you when they—they haven't been. Yeah, so that's that's the only thing I kind of hold a little solace in. Yeah. One thing you forgot to mention about Dave Dorn's extension, and the best part about that is that it still gives me more time to, for us to achieve our goal of. Dave Dorn inviting us into his office so we can do this podcast. That's still our goal. Oh, he, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's already in the works. Uh, he doesn't know it yet, but uh, I'll bring a 12-pack or maybe just a King Cobra 40, but, you know, <laughs> keep it classy. So I don't uh, know if the, the folks remember, but or they could hear it on our first podcast with the bad audio, but... I really hope they didn't even listen to that, to be honest. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but what we had said is that the goal for this podcast is that Dave Dorn would invite us to his office so we could do this podcast. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So now if he keeps getting one-year extensions, that kind of just gives me a little bit more hope. Oh, yeah. The seeds are planting. They're, they're giving the, <laughs> they might have, they may have given the extension for that. Yeah. Uh, have we had anybody call us yet? <laughs> no. Come on, people. We, we need some phone calls. This podcast was supposed to be by the people for the people, and you're letting us down. Right. It's easy number, 919-766-0096. You can call us anytime. It's not gonna, we're not going to answer. It's just going to go right to our voicemail. Leave us a comment. Leave us whatever you want. You want, you want to talk about Dave Yorn's extension. You want to talk about how you hate Carolina. You want to talk about Hell, you can team. call and say you hate us if you want. I mean, at least somebody's calling then. That's right. We probably won't air that, but... Give us a call. Let us know. Talk to us. Come on, people. We had a pretty good response on Twitter. People were saying, real happy about Dave Dorn's extension. Um, trying to see, pull up some of the, yeah, I got a lot of stoked. It's really exciting. Great move by Debbie Al. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll get a little more in-depth commenting from our people when we get this going, but you can call us, you can tweet us. We'll start trying to make this interactive. 919-766-0096. You can be famous. Yeah. Mildly Everybody famous. listens to this. Like, everybody. Yeah. All 100 <laughs> of our subscribers. Yeah. 
That's it. So, anyway, uh, that's all I got. You got anything else, Evan? I do not think so. As always, you can uh, follow us on Twitter. I'm at ER. He is at State Sports Beat. Uh, Thanks for listening. You should get on there uh, tomorrow, and I will live anger tweet the Virginia Tech game. So, you could be (laughs) a part of that. Oh, how about this? I can't go to the game tomorrow. So if somebody wants to call and leave us a good comment about their prediction for the game on our voicemail, I'll give you two tickets and a parking pass. Hey, there you go. There you go, people. You want tickets <laughs> to the game? You got to listen to this and call us <laughs> beforehand. Yeah, quick. I mean, real quick. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, y'all, uh, good luck tomorrow. And go pack. Go pack. <laughs> Thank you.